esteemed audience, I'm happy that you keep following what I'm doing, uh, but I'm still requesting you to share with your friends because some friends have not yet known that there is this channel, Edutainment for Us, that shares a lot of literature and other learning aspects. Now, I welcome you to this Edutainment for Us. I am Madam Swenja Priska, and I'm here to share with you something again on a silent song and other short stories. Now, I'm going to tackle two stories, Ivory Bangles by Eric Nyamaro and uh, The Truly Married Woman by Abiose Nicole. Now, I'm not really uh, going to um, handle the uh, story that is uh, by, 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 the way I've been doing uh, with other stories. I'm simply going, going to talk about some major aspects, virtues, and uh, vices here and there. Now, when I look at the story Ivory Bangles by Eric Nyamaro, I simply see a story in Tanzania that is uh, trying to, you know, decampaign the aspect of uh, poaching. Because in this story, what do we meet? We meet uh, men who normally beautify their women by using the ivory uh, bangles. And these ivory bangles come after the destruction of elephants. Now, we see this story happens in a, a manner that the chief's counselor loses the wife at the end of it. And why does he lose the wife? The wife is trumped by an elephant. Now, uh, students normally ask me why this woman had to die, and she was so good. Because when we look at the virtual aspect of this, we see that this woman was determined, she was loving, and she was industrious, and um, we can see she was wise. Why do I say she was uh, uh, determined? She was determined because we can see most of the time she could, uh, uh, for example, in the story we are told that uh, most of the time she could weed her farm. And uh, even she meets her death when she's in the farm again when she is weeding a part of the farm that she had just done with her daughter-in-law. We also realize that um, she goes to the market and buys what the family needs and comes, prepares everything. So we see that she's also industrious because if she could wake up, prepare everything in her home, cook the food for both the husband and her uh, grandson, uh, then we realize that she was quite industrious. She was also loving because we see uh, though it is uh, in a way that it is uh, brought out as if she was a bit uh, uh, too submissive. In the story, we see that this woman, uh, when the husband comes from the seer, we see her, um, you know, taking him to the, um, you know, side of the house and uh, then washing the man. And then she comes and uh, uh, applies a lot of tangent until the man, we are told that he feels very comfortable. If I look at the text a bit, on arriving at home, his wife unstraps his sandals, bathes him, and rubs him with sharp-smelling unguent that serves him, uh, uh, you know, makes him uh, so happy. Now, when we look at that, uh, we see submissiveness, but at some point we see an aspect of love. Now, we also see that once the husband has been washed and... Uh, has been rubbed with the sharp smelling engine. She also prepares food. Yeah, she prepares mashed green bananas, meat, vegetables, herbs, and roasted sweet potatoes for the husband. So we see uh, that aspect of love because it's not easy. You know, we can't lie. These days we might not find these privileges uh, out there. Watch out. Now we also see that they are aged. Him and the chief's counselor are aged, but we understand that when the husband comes from the seer, he has a point, he wants to share something, but the wife keeps telling him, wait, eat first, and later in the evening, that is when they are sharing information. We also see um, love from the uh, part of the husband, because there is a, a point when he had just married, and the chief was advising him, telling him to marry another wife, because one, one uh, stone is not enough, and the chief said no. Um, he used a, a given um, riddle. Let me just check in the text and uh, share out uh, this riddle. Uh, this riddle was, uh, uh, the woman wanted to fetch water. The woman had one water pot. The woman arrived at the water point. The woman found another water pot. That is page 23. 
So the author is trying, uh, the, the, the author tries to show how wise this man is because he uses a riddle to challenge the chief that you may bring another wife, but what comes in the home is only destruction. Yeah. So we see a lot of love as a virtue in this story. And even the way this man handles the aspect when he goes to the seer and the seer tells him he has to beat the wife. He comes and shares it with the, with the wife, which cannot happen. In the normal situation, it does not happen. He is also very concerned about this uh, wife. And he's also thinking about it a lot, which means he loves the wife regardless of this old age. Even the wife in this story wonders why the son, unlike the father, keeps beating the wife. So that is the aspect of virtue I'm talking about, the aspect of determination, uh, love, and uh, industrious, and wisdom. We see those, all those in this story. Now, what about the, the vices? In this story, we have vices that we learn. Uh, and maybe before I go to the vices, do we have the rewards for this? It is something you should think about because when they set questions from such a story, they would set on maybe um, decisions and how they affect the, um, that is the, the, or the, 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 the given characters or maybe the choices they make and how they affect. Do you think she made a wrong choice somewhere? That is what we should be digging for. And maybe I'll be sharing that in the vices. Now, when you look at the vices, I told you about poaching. Poaching is not a very good aspect in the society. Now, the elephants become enemies of human because they always lose tasks to, um, to make bangles for the women. Now, you see that when the chief's wife uh, gave birth to the son, uh, the first gift he received, she received from the husband was the bangles that beautified her. Uh, in the story, there's a part we are, we are given information about her moving around with the bangles. I can't quite find it immediately, but if you read this story, you realize that there is something about uh, the bangles that the chief gave the woman. And every time she moved around, it showed the calves on her. And uh, yeah, they made her look quite uh, beautiful. So at some point, it is my own opinion though. I feel that the author wanted to show us that she would die still under the wrath of the elephant. And that is why she's trampled when she goes to the farm and she's digging and the elephant comes and tramples her. Stop a bit. Okay, yeah. So we see that aspect that uh, killing of animals is not a very good aspect. We also realized uh, something about wife beating in this story. We are told a lot that um, this society believed in wife beating. And that is why when the chief goes to the seer and they, they kill, they slaughter an animal. When they check the intestines, he tells the man that something is, is uh, negative. And uh, the spirits are annoyed with a, an old man who has never beaten the wife. So which means in this society, they keep beating the wives and even the spirits. Uh, really support the wife beating aspect and do you think it's a good aspect at old age if this woman was to be beaten let us spare the elephant if the elephant did not kill this woman she would have died of wife beating uh, we see that even the son he keeps beating the wife and the ma the mother complains why does that why does the son keep beating the wife so much to the point of death yeah so when we look at the wife beating as an aspect in this story, it is not positive. We also see polygamy. And just remember what I told you earlier about the riddle. The chief counselor tells us that by marrying many women, you bring witchcraft, death, and all sorts of quarrels in the home. So it means polygamy was not a very positive aspect in the society anyway. Then uh, when we look at uh, polygamy again, uh, if it were to be there, do you think that the love we see from this old woman and the husband would exist? Possibly, I don't think so. Then uh, there is this aspect of uh, believing in uh, seers and, you know, that old aspect, that old culture. This was one of the outdated cultures that I think was wrong in this society. It kind of diverted the attention of love from these two people and it made them now begin focusing on how they'll survive, what to do. You can see the wife even tries to see whether she will cheat and run to the brother's place and say that she has been beaten and then a conflict to be solved and all that. So it diverts their attention. Even the chief is not at peace at all. 
He's restless the whole night. He can't, you know, settle and all that. Now, we can't really say that she died just because the seer had foretold. That one will be like supporting the vices in the society that wife beating should be. I believe whatever happened is procrastination. You know, once they realized that the seer had done this, and then the woman says that this man had been jealous because uh, he, you know, he promised this woman that by not marrying him, then she would later on have to be cast. So we would blame the seer and not this woman. But we would blame her for, uh, you know, uh, delaying, like she takes a lot of time. She had made a decision that she would go to the brother and see things settle. But then she went up and uh, kept procrastinating. And uh, at the end of the day, we also blame her because she goes to the field to plow when she, everyone, the scout has been, have been announcing. While she was coming from the market, they said, nobody should walk because the elephants are under, around. So we will blame her for that uh, sort of foolishness and not that she never allowed beating because I can't, I can't totally think that the author was supporting wife beating. That is the story, um, Ivory Bangles. Now I'm going to move on to uh, the next story. As I told you, I was going also to talk about the truly married woman. This is a story that I see a lot of vices than virtues. What are the vices that I see in a truly married woman by uh, uh, the, the, uh, by abuse? Now I see uh, a sort of deception, you know, like when people want to get things, they would deceive in any way possible. Now we see deception happening for Ajay and, and Ayo. Uh, this deception happens in various ways. We have the marriage deception, we have religious deception, then we have the deception on the part of uh, Ajay himself and Ayo. Now, uh, when we look at this uh, story, we see that uh, in the Christian aspect, Ajay pretends that he wants to uh, join this group. Uh, I'll just check for the name of this group so that I do not simply talk about it. We had this Christian uh, group.